Erev Tov Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live and very disturbing news that I'm going to share with you here this evening. Uh, the Russian news that you're seeing right here at 3mv.ru, uh, picture there of uh, Defense Minister Sergei uh, Soyku, who is stating in this particular Russian article here that Russia is having to respond to NATO's buildup. Uh, they speak here in the article here that NATO is actually putting in permanent uh, infrastructure for military buildup in uh, in all around Russia's uh, western border there. Of course, that being Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Poland, etc. And of course, around Belarus's borders as well. Uh, Russia states here in this article here that they would build up another 30,000 uh, men on their own border as uh, a, a way to deal with the buildup of NATO forces that are being put on their own borders there. But it gets a little bit more, a little bit more concerning here, especially as we begin to look at this video right here. And let me share with you, I'll, I'll read to you the subtitles as they come up here. And this is, again, uh, Defense Minister Sergei Soigu, who's going to be speaking in this particular thing. He says, we were especially surprised by the position of the certain countries which, under the pressure of the U.S. and NATO, publicly stated that they would deny our warships access to their ports. By the way, this was something that Russia has always had access to. Spain, for example, being one of those ports there uh, where they've always had access to. And also because Russia has been working or is trying to get uh, Washington to work with them to fight uh, terrorism inside of Syria. But it was obvious that that's not the U.S.'s nor NATO's agenda in Syria to begin with. He goes on to say, this did not affect the schedule of their traffic along the planned route as they were provided. Speaking about his ships, by the way. He said, um, with all the necessary resources as well as the Russian groups at the Himeyimim uh, and Tardis bases. Where about 2,000 tons of cargo are delivered every day. What is more important is how our understand their contribution to the fight against international terrorism in Syria. It is time for Western colleagues to decide who they are really combating, terrorist or Russia. That, friends, was very, very concerning to me to actually see that particular report, but it only gets worse. This is one that just came out uh, today on Rupley. Uh, there, uh, so, uh, again, the, pardon me just for a moment here, the uh, Defense, Minister, Defense Minister Sergei uh, Soigu will be speaking in just a moment, says these, um, Brienne in 2017 on the territory of Belarus planned a joint strategic military exercises forces, Russia and Belarus West 2017. This is the main event, joint training bodies, military administrations and troops in the coming year and ensure further improvement, operating system software, security of the Union State. We uh, will be contact military departments on street legal and regulatory implementation. Sure that. The high level of bilateral uh, ac of actions and coordinated position in the main global issues and regional activities to successfully address the issues, strengthening defense capabilities of the Union States. This approach is most relevant now when international mer uh, mer mechanisms designed to tackle crisis situations stalled. Tensions close, closer to our borders. On the western borders of the Union, U.S. and other NATO members are actively to increase its offensive potential. I want you to notice that their offensive potential. That's NATO he's speaking about. Opening new military bases, developing infrastructure, 
and stop trying to impose their will on other countries by means of economic and political uh, diktat or sanctions or dictate and military forces. It is open information war. These actions undermine strategic stability and forcing Russia to respond. Measures, defensive nature, including in the Western strategic direction. Chairman of all the Russian Council, Public Affairs Bombs Force Colonel, St. Nicholas. And then it kind of goes from there. Guys, it's getting very serious. And I don't know how much worse it's going to get. And I, I, I'm going to share with you here, I'm going to share with you this, something here that's going on inside of Russia as well. And then I'm going to turn to America. We're going to look at something that's going on in America. This, what you're seeing here on your screen, if you can tell, these are young adults here, or not even adults, just kids, 12 years old to 18 years old. So young adults and kids as young as 12 years old. Every one of these youngsters right here is holding a Russian Makarov in his hand, which is a uh, small caliber 9mm pistol. I say small caliber, a little bit smaller than the American made 9mm. Uh, they are practicing in what is called Russia's idea of summer camp, boxing and assembling AK-47s. It was an article that was written on the website called weird.com, but when I was looking at this and reading this article, one thing that came to my own mind is that Russia is getting ready to fight for its life. Russia may be the largest country in the world, but it's also the richest country in the world as far as natural resources. And I think that NATO has its sights on this country. It says Russia's idea of a summer camp boxing and assembling AK-47s. Who doesn't look back Fondly, in lazy days, spent riding horses, playing tug of war, hiking through the woods, field stripping, uh, and excuse me, hiking through the woods. But that's how field stripping an AK-47 and heavy dummy uh, and heaving dummy grenades. That's how they roll in Russia, where some 200,000 students between the ages of 11 and 19 hone their survival skills and learn the, a little history in free camps and after-school clubs under the patriotic education of Russian citizens in 2016-2020 program. People in Russia keep saying this is like the Boy Scouts, says Sarah Blesner, who photographed the camps and toy soldiers. This is not the Boy Scouts, according to the, uh, the article, the person that writes the article. But you know, what I look at, I look at a nation it feels like the entire world is turned against them. And I'm looking at a nation that is trying, that is doing its best for survival. And as I say that, we turn to America, and it seems that America is trying to do the exact same thing. In an article here that was reported on Reuters TV, look at what's going on here. These are, this is a militia. It's called the Militia 3% Security Force. And what these guys are getting ready for is what they are saying, is what, or what they say they fear is what is coming after this election. They're expecting unrest in America. They're expecting civil unrest no matter who is elected president. They say if Hillary is elected, they expect civil unrest. If, if it's uh, Trump elected, they expect unrest. Now the founder of the group, which is the guy on your screen now, he said he's not interested in going about violence. He said in fact if Trump loses, he said all they want to do is be able to protect their right to bear arms because they feel like Hillary will try to take that away and they want to be able to protect those that want to peacefully protest against her being nominated president if they do a, a march on Washington. Again, what are we looking at? We're looking at people in America seemingly preparing for what they believe is going to be survival as well. And we know this, we know it already that this is what's been going on for some time in America. There is a fear of a nation uprise. There is a fear that things are only going to get worse. And 
I think that these people here maybe have a little bit of idea of what the Russians are going through. They're fighting for survival in the event Americans up with a totalitarian government that will eventually drag the entire world, including the United States and its citizens, into a new world order. Is that really, though, what the Obama administration wants? Is this really what the elites have planned? They want chaos in order to bring about martial law in America. Maybe this is why they have been preparing and you've been seeing all these military vehicles that have been moving back and forth inside the United States. They know something's coming and they're concerned as well. But the problem is, I don't think it's so much that the militias would uprise, but someone, especially after we saw the leaked uh, information on the DNC and how that they were intentionally creating unrest at the Trump uh, rallies. Does that mean maybe someone on this elite group here is going to intentionally create havoc in the nation to get a civil war going in America? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm merely bringing you suggestions to think about because I don't know what they're intending to do. But one thing's for sure, it looks like Russia, there's no question about what they are doing. Russia is getting ready to fight for survival. And I don't think Russia is there to do a preemptive strike on Europe or the United States, either one. In fact, I think what Russia is trying to do is hold off to see what's going to happen with this whole situation inside of the United States, especially with the election coming up. I think uh, Russia is kind of hoping that maybe a change of power if it goes in the direction that Russia seems to hope for, which would be Donald Trump, that they're hoping that maybe that might bring a little bit better stability to the, to the world. I don't know, though. I just don't know. I think the elites have really are bent on bringing about a new world order. And this is why a war against Russia is inevitable for them as well. They want to bring Russia down so that they can make all the world a one world global community. That's what they're trying to do. At least that's what I, this way I see it as I'm watching the things that are unfolding here. And I see Russia preparing as well for the fight of its own life. It's troubling. It is very troubling as we watch the days we're living in and we watch these things unfold and wonder what will happen next. And then, of course, also Russia's uh, eight ships are now cruising through the Mediterranean uh, last I saw, they were uh, just south of Italy. They've been doing uh, also practices in the Mediterranean as well. No nation has been willing to allow them to refuel. You ever talk about the mark of the beast? That, that, doesn't that remind you of the mark of the beast? You can't buy or sell saving you take the mark, the name, or the number of his name, whatever the case may be. That's what sanctions are all about. We're at a wait-and-see game. You know, by the way, NATO already has. People are so worried about Russia coming down as Gog of Magog. Russia is not Gog. NATO is your Gog. There's your, there's your many different armor armaments. There's your Gog. And I'm going to bring that out. I, I, people have been asking me about it. I've not forgot about it. I will get it out very soon. And let me say this, though. Before Russia sent this major fleet down there, do you not realize that NATO already has a dozen ships off the coast of Syria in the Mediterranean between Egypt and Syria, right there off their coast there? They already had a dozen ships. Russia only had four. So I think Russia just tried to level the playing field by sending eight more of their own ships there. Now it's a dozen to a dozen. Again, don't forget the scripture I told you about. I believe it's in the book of Daniel. Sorrow on the seas, and it cannot be silenced. Maybe that's over in Jeremiah. I forget exactly where it was at. But anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.